praise God. And we've been blessed by our music ministry. And let me thank God for the woman I have been able to live with for the last 35 years. My wife made the big seven piece stand, baby. Y'all are better than that. I am no stranger to the church of God in Christ. When I grew up, I grew up around the culture in tent revivals over in the East End down in Ebenezer. I remember Dr. Matty Moss Clark. I remember those Walker triplets. I can't remember which one of them liked me. Amen, but I'm still here. For All the, the elect ladies, thank you so much for being here. What can I say about my friend Robert Jones? Robert and I met some years ago as he built our family life center and he and I have been friends ever since. He and his wife have been great friends to us. When their son got sick, we went into prayer and God raised them up. And we give God praise for that. Stand to your feet. Let's hear what God has to say tonight to the brotherhood and to those of us that are here. Psalms 118. Psalms 118, verses 14 to verse 17. Psalms 118, verse 14 to verse 17. The Lord is my strength and song, and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does balance. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does balance it. Verse 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Or right, lift your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. The priest is going to declare tonight by the revelation of the word. Look at the real good and say, neighbor. My declaration tonight. I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I'm on assignment tonight to preach and impart this declaration from the revelation of this text so that you can make it through the next devil's assignments on your life. I want you to repeat in faith after me our summer tonight subject, I shall live, I shall live and, not and not die. You just said like you meant it, I shall live, I shall live and, not and not die. It ain't for everybody, but it's for somebody tonight that the enemy has tried to attack your life, your finances, and your money, and your body. I shall live and not die. November the 12th, the year of 2019, after I had a stroke laying on my bed, knowing that the devil tried to take me out, I declared to myself that I shall live and not die. And guess what? Here I am tonight. Stroke in heaven. And I made it just the way that I shall live. We're going to take all night. I want you to know tonight that that is, in this room, that is a premature death warrant on a lot of us in this room. And although I'm speaking figuratively, I'm also speaking literally. The devil who did not give you love, what life wants to take your life, because of the anointing that is on us, the potential that is in us, and the future that is for us, the devil is trying to take some of us out of here. But my mama said all the time, the devil is a lie. The devil wants to kill you. 
But somebody, he's trying to kill you physically, financially. He's trying to kill somebody also physically. I've discovered in the context of our text, does the know tonight that David, who was anointed to be king over Israel, proved that he only wants to kill those who have a king disposition within you. If you weren't nobody, the devil would be trying to kill you. If you weren't going nowhere, the devil would, would leave you alone. But because there's an anointing on your life, the devil is trying to kill you. And the death threat is so that you won't make it to the throne where God eventually will have you to go. He always starts a lot earlier than when you get there. That's why he started on Moses early. He started on Joseph early. And he even started on Jesus as a kid very early. Because he's always trying to stop the anointing and the elevation in your life. That's why he's been on some of us all of our life. Because he knew that you were destined for something. He knew that God had his hand on you. He knew that God was going to elevate you. He knew that God was going to use you. The devil ain't fighting who you are right now. He's not fighting what you have right now. The devil is not fighting where you're going, where you are right now. The devil is fighting where you're going. He's fighting what you're going to have. He's trying to steal what God is going to make out of your life. Have you ever thought about why the devil is really working on this generation of young people? He's working on them because they got all kinds of potential. That's why he's working on our sons and our daughters, our grandchildren, because they have a lot of potential. They've got a lot of future. I do the best I can. The devil knows that if, he can, if we couple our wisdom with our word, there ain't nothing we can't stop. No one stop us. In our text, we see the revelation of the reality. David had lived under the physical threat of death from Saul for many years. Even as he served Saul as a teenager. If you study the Psalms and the Samuel, it is not hard to comprehend the fact that Saul wanted to kill David. Time and time again, he made numerous attempts against the physical well-being of David, sometimes in camps and other times in caves. But David, it was a never-ending run and flight from this murderous man by the name of Saul. Now, Saul, why are you jealous of David? Saul, you on the throne, but yet you jealous of a limited kid. Why? Because even the devil sees the potential in you. The devil knows where you're going. The devil knows what God has for you. If you read your Bible from the book of 1 Samuel 18 to Samuel 23, David was always on a fight, fight for his life, just trying to live. Ain't wasn't bothering nobody. You ever felt like that ain't bothering nobody, but look like every time I turn around, the devil keeps on messing with me, trying to stay out of folk business, ain't messing with nobody, but the devil keeps trying to launch attacks on me. It must be because he knows that I am destined for something great. I went to the doctor the other day, and the doctor said, did they ever find out why you had a stroke? No. But I know the devil was trying to kill me. I said the devil was trying to kill me. But what he didn't know is that I belong to God. And because I belong to God, God fights for me. God holds me. God keeps me. Song that 
what the old saints used to sing. I'm going to see if y'all knew it. It went like this. Just another day that the Lord has kept you.
a job that I've been on for 22 years was a ministry, but I never, not one day, did we go for broke. The bills kept getting paid. Matter of fact, we got more when we didn't have nothing. Why? Because God proved that I am your resource and I am your source. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. are you going to shout with me? If not, I'll shout over you. Anybody got any past experiences that can testify of God's keeping power? If you got any kind of past experiences of God's keeping power over your life, shout glory to God.
His declaration, first of all, because of his testimony. His declaration was second because of his longevity. I got more to do. But the third reason for his declaration was because, look what the verse it says. In verse 17. He said, I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Say this and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. The reason why I'm still here is because God's integrity is on the line. It ain't got nothing to do with you. God's integrity is on the line. I said, God's integrity is on the line. You can say God's a healer. He's a way. My family was praying for me. I was praying for me, and I was telling God, your integrity is on the line. You've been my everything up to now. Now, God, I need you to be a healer. Now I need you to keep me, God. And guess what God is doing now? Now God is raising me back up now. I said, God is raising me back up. He's giving me more than I lost. because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m.